Hi everyone, Tiffany Tilvin here with another Q&A Wednesday video, a weekly feature at simplytiffanystudios.com dedicated to answering your digital scrapbooking questions. Let's dive right into today's topic. In a previous Q&A, I introduced y'all to DIY, do it yourself, digi crafting techniques, where I share the best steps for crafting your own digi products as well as the why some steps, some options are better than others. Because there's benefits to knowing how to craft your own digis. Less money spent, no limitations on theme, color, resources, season, and you become the digital creative mastermind. Well, today's do it yourself is how to build your own digital flair, sometimes known as epoxy, also known as embellishing bubbles, and so on and so forth. I'm here to tell you that good flair, professional flair, realistic looking digital flair ain't easy. But it will be after I show the full out process using Adobe Photoshop and a combination of layer styles that will blow your wig off. And because my flair requires all those bells and whistles, I provided a link to download my source file, the file you'll see me create in this video, as well as a colorful handout with screenshots, so you can easily follow along in your editor using your own papers, of course. The cost of the source file and handout is just $1. Photoshop Elements users, this is one of those tricks that will only go so far for you because the effects panel just doesn't offer many of the options found in the Photoshop version. However, you can still make your own flares using my source file too, should you want to purchase it for, yep, you guessed it, $1. We'll start with supplies. Now we all know that flair has some type of design within, an icon, an image, text, scene, something is in a bubble. So before you make the bubble, you should loosely consider what will be inside of it. Of course, with the method I share, you can swap your supplies at any time, but it helps to start with something and then swap later. I've chosen to use a simple journal card. Why? Well, because for the most part, it already has a great design, nice texture, contrast between the colors. It's a finished piece all on its own. So all I have to do is make it into an epoxy. I've opened this journal card and a background paper in my editor and dragged and dropped both into a 12 by 12 inch, 300 DPI white background workspace. The background paper won't be part of the flare, but it will help me shadow and evaluate my flare against a textured and colorful background. And with those initial considerations thought through, we can begin our steps. Flares are obviously in the shape of a circle. So we'll select the ellipse tool and click in the middle of the workspace. A dialog box opens where we can input the working size of the flare. We'll go with 1.36 inches by 1.36 inches. Why this size, you ask? Well, this gives you a large enough flare so it looks realistic on a scrapbook page, as well as it's large enough that you can reduce the size comfortably or leave as is. Click OK and voila, a circle. My circle is gray. Your circle can be any color of the rainbow. It does not matter. Next, move your design. In this case, the journal card. So it's directly above the circle on both your workspace and in the layers panel. Then create a clipping group from the card to the circle. From this point, we can see how the design will look within the border of our flare. You want to reduce, rearrange, and otherwise adjust the alignment and positioning of the design so it looks good within your flare. Just fine tune to your taste, you know what I mean. Once that's done, we can play with some layer styles, baby. Double click the circle shape and up pops the layer styles menu. 
Now I love layer styles and the presets in the editors truly are the foundation for many professional digi products you see sold in stores. The listing to the right of the style pop-up allows you to make adjustments to the effects, the varying styles. However, the top header provides access to the style presets and it's here where we can load our base for our epoxy. Click on the tiny gear to the right of the current listing of styles and select Web Styles from the list. Then click OK. However, you want to choose a pin if you have styles you don't want to see removed from the current listing. Your listing will change or add a new group of styles depending on your pin choice. From this new list, select Clear Gel with Drop Shadow. A number of blending and layer styles will become active. Then click OK and we'll take a look at our new epoxy. It's not too bad for start or base for the flare. And I say that because you could honestly stop right here and use this as a type of epoxy if you wanted your flare to look like a wet bubble. But we don't want wet bubbles, no! We're going to improve upon this base preset and build something more flary and less bubbly. Open the layer style menu again for the circle and we'll make our adjustments from the top, starting with embossing. The embossing style adds that strong highlight you see here. It's positioned at the top because the lighting angle is set at 90 degrees. Well, let's change that to the typical 120 degree lighting setup we use for digital scrapbooking. And then set the altitude of the lighting source to 58. This repositions the highlight and now it looks natural. Let's move on to inner shadow. The inner shadow adds, you guessed it, the shadow inside the flare. The preset is set for gray, which makes a core gray shadow. So our flare has a gray tone as a result. Ew, we don't want that. A better color choice is a darker color, sampled from the design we've chosen to use. Now in this case, I'm using a mostly yellow paper. So I'll change the inner shadow to a deep yellow, a golden rod and it instantly improves the tone of my flare. You'll want to use a dark and saturated color that's straight out of your design. All right, so far so good, and looking much better than the original, if I do say so myself. What's next? Inner glow, satin, color overlay, and outer glow. Leave those settings exactly the way they are. They're perfect. And don't be tempted, toggle them off either. You might not see any change when you do, but trust me, they're doing something. So just jump straight to drop shadow because we can certainly improve on this shadow. Whew. If you've watched my Q&A on shadowing embellishments, then you already know why this shadow sucks. It's unrealistic. So here are the changes I advise. Change the blend mode from multiply to linear burn. Choose a dark brown color instead of gray. Reduce the drop shadows distance and size. I chose 27 and 32 respectively. And change the lighting angle from 90 degrees to 120. The lighting angle is extremely important because you need the drop shadow to match the lighting angle of the highlight. And if you remember, we already set that for the embossed style to 120 degrees. Hit OK when you're done and marvel at your changes. What do you think? Better? Oh, you betcha. Could you stop here? Sure. But when you compare this to my final flare, there's also a tiny highlight on the bottom, right? You can see that here. That's the part of a flare that makes it look plastic, like light is reflecting off different parts of the tiny piece. We've yet to create this very important feature. And this is where overlapping layer styles comes in handy. All right, keep up with me. 
Duplicate the circle in the Layers panel, and then arrange the duplicate above the design of your new flare. Reduce its fill opacity to zero. That cleanly knocks out that color, but keeps the layer style still visible. Now toggle off the visibility of every other effect except Bevel and Emboss. And we'll take a closer look at this layer style. Change the direction of the highlight from up to down. Then reduce the size of the highlight from 46 to 13 and soften to 10. Change the lighting angle and source to 117 and 69, respectively. Bump up the shadow to 50% and change the color to a similar deep color you used earlier for that inner shadow. It doesn't have to match perfectly, but it should be of the same hue or color. And then click OK. From here, you should see a new highlight on the lower right of the flare. If you don't, duplicate this layer. And if it's still not strong enough for you, duplicate it again. Now, if the effect is too strong, you can always reduce the master opacity for any of the small highlight layers. And that's how you fine tune this look. And what we've done here is layer a number of embosses to add that second highlight and polish the look of the flare. Why did I choose the values that I did? It's what worked best for the design of the paper I chose, plus my own subjective creativity. You can play with these values as you like, but now you know how. Flare perfection, baby. If you like what you saw and want to use my results to make your own flare using either Photoshop or Photoshop Elements, download the source file, plus a colorful handout with all of the steps and settings I just used for $1. Now, how's that for another do-it-yourself digi-crafting technique in this week's Q&A Wednesday? If you're not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, come on, what are you waiting for? It's easy to keep up to date with new do-it-yourself or Q&A uploads. And if you want more, simply Tiffany's free tips, tutorials, and discounts towards upcoming classes, sign up for my e-list. You won't want to miss a single piece of information I've got coming up. Huge things are on the horizon, y'all. Until the next Q&A Wednesday and do-it-yourself digi-crafting technique, happy scrapbooking.